I'm going to be talking about solving the right problems. As you know, I'm a business consultant and, and mentor. I go into lots of small and large companies and it always, not always, but sometimes it seems to me that a lot of time and energy is spent on something that is actually going to have very little impact. We often jump to solutions before we've actually defined the problem. So this is really what I want to talk about um, here. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Janice B. Gordon, aka the problem solver. So this is a problem I'm going to solve today. Day. Um, the problem solver. What I do is I help to grow businesses one client at a time, one customer at a time, really focusing on the customer's needs and keeping customers happy and getting companies to really understand who are their core customers and how they can keep them happy, how they can keep a pipeline coming, um, social selling, key account management, all of these tools that, that I use. One company I worked with, I, I helped them to grow um, their business business growing their contracts um, by six million in less than a year and this is using a lot of the strategies that I've been talking to you in my series of Wednesday wisdom live training now I always do a blog and I post it on Monday. I often put a lot more information that I don't get time to talk about on these live trainings. Try, try and keep it within half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour. Um, but I also post this on, on YouTube as well. So you can go either onto a, my, uh, this page and go through all the video live training or hop onto my YouTube channel or the problem hyphen solver blog um, and you'll get loads of information there. So last week I talked about agile, agile processes and um, agility is really uh, uh, about uh, once you've decided on the, the problem and uh, it's really about scoping that out, putting together the team. But the, the methodology of agile allows your team to be more motivated. It's really good at team morale, um, work more efficiently. It saves you time in resolving problems. It changes your, your culture. It helps with the decision making. There are a whole host of real benefits to agile. So make sure you, you go back to last week's live training but I wanted to take a step back from from agile prior to getting to that stage it's really about how do you make a decision as to which problems uh, you're going to solve and in business it's recognizing it's a constant series of problems and this is why I use certain uh, methods rather than a one-size-fits-all or rather than a uh, a problem is recognized and you then uh, solve it and then you continue to do what you've always done. This is really kind of a continue innovation problem solving process, recognizing that if you're managing a department, you're managing people, certainly if you're running a company and you've got staff, if you have customers and I hope you have lots of them, you are going to have problems, you know, and it's just understanding problems isn't a negative thing. Problems are opportunities. Problems are challenges. And it's about embracing those problems as real challenges because they can actually help your company to grow. It can help your company to see new opportunities that you haven't recognised before. So problems just like complaints can be excellent, an excellent opportunity for you to evolve your business, um, evolve your relationships um, as well. Get a lot closer to your customer, which I've talked a lot about in the in previous um, videos. So see problems as an opportunity. In fact, just rename it as opportunities because you're every single day that you wake up and you open the doors to your business or if it's a 24 hour business, there will be problems and it's really about identifying the ones that are most important, the ones that are most critical and, and actually having a continuous process that you're resolving them so you don't see it as oh gosh another problem you actually see it as part of your business that's what you you do so part of this is again is about mindset change to dealing with problems and then it's about having the systems and processes the um the culture within your organization in, in order to continually resolve uh, these 
problems or opportunities. And so, you know, too many businesses and many, many organisations are really not proficient at articulating the problem in their business, the problems in the business, because there tends to be an attitude of problems are really bad. And I really want you to, to change that. Actually, problems are really, really good. Um, and it's about identifying the real problems. So, you know, because we're so overwhelmed with day to day business and we see problems as problems, um, we tend to avoid them and we tend not to really embrace them. And we don't think about what is the process because it's a daily thing problems. What is the process that we've got in place? How are we utilizing our resources? You know, what are we doing? Um, because this is something that's going to happen every single day. So it's the way that we structure and model our business um, to actually uh, ensure that we're dealing with these problems in, a, in an efficient manner. So, you know, business leaders, entrepreneurs, business owners really need to look at problems as opportunities. They're challenges that test your business, but they're challenges that can take you to really uncover massive opportunities. So the first thing I want to stress here is really seeing problems as something to embrace. Albert Einstein said, if I had one minute to or uh, to change the world, or if I had, um, you know, one hour, sorry, to change the world, to change the planet, I would spend 59 minutes on defining the problem and really kind of analysing what the problem is and only one minute on actually solving it. And really, it's it's about understanding that, you know, defining the problem is the key to the solution. Um, it really is the key to the solution because, you know, there's there's an awful lot of waste, time and energy uh, and money that is spent on solving the wrong problem. It's actually solving the symptom. If you look at solving a symptom, the problem still um, will resurrect itself. It still persists. So the important thing is to define what the real problem is. Now, the starting point is really simple. It's, it's questioning. And it could be who, what, why questions, you know, to really scope out what is the problem. It can be a whole series of surveying the, the people that have an impact on the problem. So it may not be the customers, it may be an internal problem, whatever it may be, it's important to involve, you know, all of the stakeholders that can affect the problem and have an impact on, on the problem and really get a wide diversity of views as to how to handle the problem. Now, because you're a business that re recognises that every day there are new problems, that is part of, of a business evolving going. It's almost like a business breathing. You know, the, the breath is the, the problems and, you know, and solutions and it's constantly being able to react to that. And so if you restructure your, your business so that you recognise that problems are presenting themselves every day and that's what, you know, your team is, is there to resolve those issues and the processes that you have in, in, in fact finding and, you know, whether it's qualitatively or quantitatively, you're constantly looking out for where the anomalies are so that you can get onto it as quickly as possible and, you know, the, the, the people and the processes come into to place to resolve those those issues. If your organisation is proficient at that, if your business is really honed into this, then it's not a problem, is it? It's not a problem at all. It's actually just the way things happen around here. So I, I really want you to think about um, you know, problems are happening all the time, but it's about defining them and as to the most important and the most critical. And then also in looking at scoping it out and asking questions and involving more people and making it more, more collaborative. Um, but it's also about the way you solve those problems once you've identified that it's a problem and, and, and not a, a, a symptom. Um, so it's about understanding that there are problems and there are s symptoms and then also understanding about there are certain problems that are 
will resolve themselves. And I certainly learned this uh, in managing people as well. There are lots of issues that actually come up, but actually often just time resolves those things. So it's about identifying the level of, of importance those problems have, but also the impact here. I The way that I, I uh, work through problems is looking at which are the problems that are going to have the biggest impact um, and scoping it out, it's about understanding that. And this is where solving a problem that you've identified, but actually solving it in a way that's going to have the minimum amount of impact. And I see this happening so often in businesses. It's unbelievable. And in doing that, it wastes a lot of time and money by solving the right problem in the wrong way, or, you know, and not solving it to have maximum impact because they haven't recognized that problems are opportunities. That's what they are. So, you know, solving the right problem, but solving it in the wrong way is equally as, as bad. And let me give you an example here. You know, I'm a real advocate of um, a women on boards that, uh, having a quota. Um, yeah, 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 I know, right. But, you know, like this, so this was identified as a problem. There are not enough women on boards or in senior management, and this is a global issue, but um, there aren't enough women. And so that is a problem. And it's a problem because we probably wouldn't have had the financial crash in the way that we had it because we don't have a diversity of views. And there's a lot of opportunities, a lot of, of, of opportunities that businesses are missing out on because they don't have a diversity of view. No, the, the consensus is the way to deal with that is on a gender basis, which I don't entirely agree with, but anyway, <laughs> don't get me on my soapbox. Um, so, you know, we want to get more women on, on, on boards. And so the, the way that it's been dealt with is that we will have um, a target um, of 25 and it's now 30 and it potential move up to 40 percent and the way that businesses have dealt with that because it's been quite a loose criteria is that they've brought on more non-executive director female non-executive directors on boards to address the balance because they're just thinking about it in a linear way we need more women on boards how can we get more women on boards the easiest solution to that is that we will in um recruit female non-executive directors. Now, if you understand non-executive directors don't really have um, their part of the decision-making um, process on the board, but they're not really day-to-day -day within an organization. So whatever you know, a board may, may say, it has to be the chief executive, the senior management team, the employees of that company um, that will actually direct the way that that um, decision has been, uh, will be implemented throughout the company. So it doesn't necessarily change the culture. It doesn't necessarily change the recruitment process, the selection process, the promotional process. You know, it doesn't necessarily change the fabric of the decision making within the organization at all of the management levels, really, the language of the organization. So, it, you know, it's an easy solution to a problem. It is a solution. I recognize that. But it's not going to have the maximum biggest impact of perhaps a, a, a quota where you, a companies would have to look at their pipeline of women coming up through their companies and devise systems, whether it's childcare, whatever it may be, you know, in order to change the blockages that are in place within organisations that prevent women from coming up. And, you know, more women leave uh, higher education with more and higher level qualifications. So at that, if that is the starting point, they are actually doing better. So it's as soon as they go into employment that things change. So this is almost like a sticking plaster without actually cleaning the wound. And this is why I think something more fundamentally needs to be done, not just because I believe in it, but because it's going to have the biggest impact. So this is what I mean about solving a problem. And it is a solution, but actually it's a solution <laughs> 
that isn't going to have the biggest impact, really. And it's not to say that quotas will. Whatever the solution may be, what they didn't look about is really scoping it out and looking at it as an opportunity. They looked at it as a problem and then they stuck a, a solution on, on top of that problem that has an impact, but it doesn't have the maximum impact that's going to really fundamentally impact people and change things um, for the longer term. So in that way, it's kind of a waste of resources, really, um, because we're not really getting to the root causes of the problem in the way that they've solved it. So I hope that explains what I mean about, and I see this all the time when I go into business, they tend to, because of the overwhelmment of, you know, day to day business, put sticking plasters on without cleaning um, the wound, without fully um, identifying what the real problem is and, and looking at scoping it out and having a process of solution finding, looking at all of the options, what are the bad and what is the biggest impact. Impact doesn't come into the decision making process and that's what I would like to change. This is why I'm talking to you um, about it uh, today. What I'm called the problem solver and when I go in and problem solve, impact is a really key element that often companies, um, um, businesses, owners, entrepreneurs don't do not look at. And really, if you're going to spend time and money, you want to spend time and money that's going to have the biggest, longest term return on investment that's going to create the biggest impact. And that's why I think it's absolutely um, crucial. So problem um, solving or solution finding for these opportunities. That's the way it should should be viewed. So, you know, what I did is I created a, the 4D problem solving um, process that I'd like to briefly um, go through with you um, here. And, and this is really about, you know, looking at uh, defining a problem away from just the symptoms, but the real problem. And also, you know, the mechanism you go through to really find the solutions and also making sure that you follow through on that. So the first thing is about define. The first D is define. Defining the real problem, looking at the root cause and there's certain series of, of questioning you, you know you would do to go through that. And then we've got discover. Now this is this is where you're really scoping it out. This is where you're looking at all of the stakeholders that will impact on that particular problem, um, the impact in creating it and impact on solving it as well. So all of the stakeholders, so customers certainly at core to that, but employees, suppliers, you know, in that you would have like a, a champion within the business that's championing that particular cause, um, you know, that may be a mentor or, you know, a sponsor within in the business. So there's, you know, really kind of like questioning. Mentors are very good at, at you know, questioning a business you know the what the whys and and the who's and and the when's but really kind of open questions because the problem is within many businesses even if it's a a small business you have a leader a, a, an owner or key managers and the thing is is the character and the the um the dominance of the business comes from those that narrow range of people um and so you know someone that is really using open questions and really being a bit of a devil's advocate and asking people why have you come to that solution why do you think that have you tested it and all all of that actually really helps to kind of open up the the critical um thinking so that you know the discovers phrase is really scoping out and discovering you know looking for um opportunities here and and then you have the dissolve. So we've got this really kind of open bubble of all of the opportunities and we've scoped out all the different possibilities and we've spoken to lots of, of, of people and it's really you've got to dissolve that down into what is your clear path. Otherwise, you know, you'll keep kind of uh, uh, looking um, and not actually solving. <laughs> and so uh, dissolving is about finding your clear, clear path. 
And this is the path that's going to create the biggest impact. Impact is really important here because there's never one solution. And it's about choosing the one that's going to have the biggest impact. The problem with jumping to a solution is that you only have one solution and you actually haven't gauged it against all the possibilities. And then you're not able to test which is the one that's going to have the biggest impact. And they may have different impacts as well. So there's a decision to be made there as to which one one your company your business your department wants to go for and that may be how does that fit into your overall business plan um, so dissolve is really about uh, uh, bringing all of the discovery questions and options down to your own clear path but you know the the so the fourth one is about destiny this is about the real commitment to the outcome to whatever intention that you have so once you've decided on what that impact is going to be that's going to come from the real opportunities that are there it's really about making a commitment to follow through um, with that but it's important that you take this a uh, step by step process so that you communicate in order to get that commitment and for you know the whole team to be able to kind of follow um, along not just the people that will be impacted or can impact that particular opportunity or, or problem but everyone in the company needs to be, be on board as to why this it, this impact that you're creating as soon as you start talking about the impact you get really excited but you know the whole company is creating a massive impact then it really kind of like um, filters down to, to everybody so it's a great way of engaging the whole company the whole business in um, you know creating this real big opportunity so this is the the four D problem solving process that I use um, with companies and it's really to get them to stop going from problem solution that's it we're done next let's move on let's do things in the way that we've always done things it's actually to look at it this is an opportunity here guys you know what are we going to do with these opportunities let's not limit ourselves let's think of you know how we can really open this up and you know this may be a real opportunity to our for our business and this is one process that you could use to look at um scoping out you know the the, the best um, uh, solutions to that um, particular uh, opportunity or problem that you may have. Much of the work I do is really kind of helping companies by ask questioning, helping companies through all of the questioning that I have to really do what they do best. The thing is they don't always do best simply because they're so strangled by the structures that they've created the perceptions that they they may have um by you know strangled by just their own limited um thinking really so you know i i go in and i bust a lot of that and there's real opportunities and just in language as well by using the word problem we think of one thing if we use opportunities you know then we think of other things really don't you so it's often about changing the language Language within you know your own mind and, and what you say and within your own organization that helps you to really kind of move forward and create massive opportunities you know the most robust solutions are those that are created through collaboration so looking at you know who is impacted that's why impact is such a a, a, a great word who's impacted by this this problem and that you know us creating the the solution you know similarly business leaders and entrepreneurs they need to become more proactive about developing solutions and that's with understanding that every single day there's a problem so every single day there must be a solution this is just a continuum on us doing business and that's you know that's what business is all about so it's about really Really being able to have an effective system that is going to keep identifying problems so not waiting for them to come to you but actually identifying them and relishing the fact that you have a great system in place you have a great team in place that really is going to eat those problems for breakfast and really make the most of them you can only do that if you structure your business in a way that you know really embraces um, the opportunities as they present themselves you know so that's the 4d problem solving um 
um, method uh, that I have is only one of several. You've got, you know, the eight discipline problem solving process. You've got the root cause analysis. You've got Six Sigma and, you know, for um, small, medium businesses, you've got the DMAIC approach, which is part of the Six Sigma. But also you've got the grow model as well. Now in coaching, uh, um, a lot of people, a lot of coaches use the, the grow model. And that's really about having a, a goal, uh, an end point, and then having the an understanding of the reality where you are now. And then uh, looking at the obstacles um, that will prevent you from moving towards your goal, but also the op options um, as, as well, to, options you have to make your progress. And then the last W is about the way forward. This is about understanding how you can really convert those options into, you know, your, your goals. And so that's the GROW method um, as well. So it just gives you a model, a process in which to move from. But the, I've, did, I've kind of developed my own process based on, on the GROW method, based on what I've seen and working with lots of, of companies. Um, you know, like business is, a, is as a continuum, as I've said, problems present itself th themselves every single day. If you're proactive, you're going out and you're looking for them because you're looking really for those opportunities. So you really want a process that is also continuous. And so let me just explain my um, st six step process, but it actually is just continuous really. And it's really about understanding you know, where you want to be. And unlike the GROW method that has an end point, this actually has, uh, it talks about setting an intention. What is your intention? What are we trying to achieve here? What impact do we want to make? Um, and so it's about uh, where do you want to be? So setting an intention rather than having an end. And then it's looking at where you are now. And it's really about understanding, you know, what is the starting point? And so that you can really measure what is the gap to where you want to be from where you are now. And it's about being real about where you are now. What are your limited resources? You know, in, in, in this, I would like to do a thousand one things, but all businesses have a limit of resources. So it's about understanding what you can do. There's no point continually stretching yourself. You won't get anywhere. It's really about understanding what are the resources you have? What is the skill set that, that you have? You know, what are the limitations based on where you are now? That's your, your, your starting point to understand the gap and what you can do. And then it's, um, it's looking at, well, really what's stopping you? What are the things? And, and it's about having that honest conversation about what's stopping you from, you know, bridging that gap. Because often you'll find that gap's been there for a while. It's just that you weren't willing, uh, to, uh, for whatever reason, time limitations, resource, to actually deal with it. But it's often those gaps that are, are, are there in business. So, you know, what's the thing that's stopping you? Has that now changed? Or what can you do to remove those, the obstacle, the barriers, the things that are preventing preventing you from bridging that gap unless you recognize that there are the you know the things that are stopping you barriers resources whatever it may may be you're going to look at that gap and you're going to unrealistically think that you're going to close the gap and that's what we want to do we are just looking at closing the the gap we're not thinking about an end point we're thinking about an intention and then it's like well what steps are you going to take and it's a what you are going to do, not what you can do, what you are going to do. And again, it's about based in reality. What is what is possible? What are you going to do? And it's about committing yourself to those those things. So once you recognize the barriers, then just make a statement about what you are going to do to bridge that gap. Um, and so it's about understanding your action plan, the time scale, the resources, how you're going to allocate them, you know, whether you're using, you know, agile um, within that. So, you know, there's all different strategies to actually start taking action, lots of different strategies, but actually you've got to have the momentum um, there. So what are you going to do? And then, you know, the, the fifth. So we've got 
um, where do you want to be? We've got um, where you are now. We've got the, you know, looking at what's the, the barriers, what's stopping you. And then we're looking at what steps you are going to take. And then the fifth one is where now? Because the thing is, it's, it's about understanding that you're closing the gap. And so you have to keep monitoring where you are within that gap, how far you've closed it. So it's about having the, you know, the resources constantly evaluating how close you are to your, your set intention, whether you need to make in, uh, adjustments, whether you can do better here, pull back here, whatever it may be. So it's not just about, OK, this is strategy, we're just going to run with it. It's about continually mon monitoring and improving the process that you have created in order to close the gap. So you've really got to be in touch with the monitoring and evaluation of what you're doing so you can continue to learn as you're doing it and not wait until you've got to, you know, an end point or, you know, you, you've achieved your goal. You may miss your goal because you're not actually doing that e essential evaluation as you um, act. And then the final thing here is what next? You know, as you continue to close the gap, you may be able to have less resources on that because now it's become part of the, the fabric of what you do on a daily basis. And you, you can move on to other intentions that you want to do, but you're continuing to mon monitor it. So where next? What do we need to focus on? What can we focus our resources on? What other gaps do we need to start closing? So it's a, it's a more of a gentle but continuous improvement process of asking yourself uh, about rather than end point, you know, we've solved that one, done, we're going to continue doing things the way we do, how we can continue to evolve and change. And what we're using as our guiding principle is the, the gaps in our business, the opportunities, the problems um, that we're wanting to, to master and evolve. And, and it's really looking at what next, constantly looking at what next, what next, what other gaps can we find and being proactive. And really just starting that you know where we want to be and working your way down again where we want to be the reality of where we are now what's stopping us you know what are the you know the the steps that we're going to to create and and then looking at you know what now monitoring um our progress and then what next what's the next gap and that's really uh, the culture of your business needs to be looking at at uh, problems being real opportunities and having the systems and processes, the people, the culture, you know, the motivation, the insight in place to really relish those opportunities. All right, so that's it for today. I've given you lots to think about how you can uh, start to change your mindset about problems and look at them as real opportunities. I've given you lots of different um, methods that I've used in, in business and um, to help them to help my businesses that I, I work with to evolve and, and grow. And really, you know, all of this starts with a change of, you know, mindset about how you look about a Upon what you do. Uh, it changes how you do it and the impact, which is a brilliant word that you can have. So uh, join me next week when I'll be talking more Wednesday wisdom to help your business to grow. So please um, share this. It will be really great if you, you do. I love to get your comments, so make sure you comment below. below. I always go in and uh, check your comments. Share what you've learned, share if you've already applied some of um, my strategies and uh, let me know how you've got on. I love to hear from you. So stay well. See you one o'clock next Wednesday for more Wednesday Wisdom. Have a great week.